This January, as Russian forces amassed on Ukraine's border, the U.S. Congress began targeting major Kremlin-connected banks with sanctions. When Sovacom Bank, Russia's ninth largest bank, found itself a target, it hired D.C.'s Mercury Public Affairs, which deployed two former members of Congress, Senator David Vitter and Representative Toby Moffitt, to lobby former colleagues on their behalf. But when Russia invaded Ukraine in February, that contract died. So too did the contracts of 11 other lobbying and public relations firms who were working for other Russian clients. Since 2016, Russian oligarchs, banks, and gas companies have spent around $182 million to influence U.S. policymakers. In the process, they bought the services of former American members of Congress and other key government officials. So the question is simple. Should former members of Congress be allowed to spin through the revolving door of public service and then go to work on behalf of foreign governments and companies? Other examples include former Congressman Rick Butcher, who lobbied for JSC VTV Bank, Russia's second largest banking group that is 92% owned by the Kremlin. And it's not just a Russia problem. Former politicians are lobbying for a host of foreign interests that impact U.S. national security. Some more notable examples of the revolving door include Ileana ross Leighton, the former House Foreign Affairs Committee chairwoman who is now a lobbyist for the United Arab Emirates. Her successor in that position, Ed Royce, now lobbies to send more military equipment to Egypt. The former House Armed Services Committee chairman, Buck McKeon, is now a lobbyist for Saudi Arabia, helping to ensure U.S. support for Riyadh's war in Yemen. The former chairman of the powerful House Appropriations Committee, Bob Livingston, He's worked for a host of unsavory actors, including Muammar Gaddafi. And the list goes on and on. Former members of Congress that go on to lobby for foreign interests cash in on lucrative opportunities to bend U.S. foreign policy to the whims of their paymasters. This doesn't always benefit U.S. national security or U.S. national interests. It's time we stopped the revolving door. 